packs of robot dogs, cleaning bots, uncrewed cargo planes, clear 3D prints and much more. This is MOSFET Weekly. Starting off with ever more automation news. This week, Turkish postal services company Kuryanet recently completed the installation of the new automated robotic sorting system at its depot on the outskirts of Istanbul. They claim it is the biggest example of a robot-based sorting system in Europe and the first of its kind in Turkey. It uses 120 Libiao mini yellow bots, which each have a load capacity of up to 10 kilograms, and when combined they can process 45,000 items per hour. The entire system uses roughly one-fifth of the area needed for traditional conveyor systems. A team from Stanford's Intelligent and Interactive Autonomous Systems Group has developed a new way to feed people using a robotic arm. Current feeding systems all stop in front of the user's mouth, forcing them to lean forward to receive the food, and the team says many people simply aren't capable of the required head movement, leading to the creation of their version. The arm marries a face detection system with a force reactive controller, so it not only knows how to pick up food and where to place it, but it also detects when the person takes a bite, only applying the necessary force in response to their movements. Autonomous bots are finding their way into many different areas of life. This time Czech supermarket brand Albert has been using robots to clean their stores. The company recently announced that the autonomous cleaning bots deployed across their Czech Republic hypermarkets and distribution centres have cleaned over 20 million square metres, completing nearly 100,000 cleaning routes, and during 2023 they will almost double the number of stores using them. A few self-driving vehicle stories this week. First, Ford announced Blue Cruise is coming to UK highways, allowing drivers of Mustang Mach-E models to drive roughly 2,300 miles of pre-mapped motorway at level 2 autonomy. Drivers will be able to take their hands off the steering wheel and pedals, but cameras will check to make sure the driver is still watching the road and paying attention. The automotive giant says this is the first approval of its kind inside Europe. In other news, Kodiak Robotics unveiled its fifth-generation autonomous truck with new mirror-mounted sensor pods which combine all the sensors in an integrated package, eliminating the need for roof-mounted hardware. The company says that this and other updates move them closer to deploying the trucks in real-world commercial settings. In similar news, Gatic has partnered with Kroger for autonomous food deliveries using their self-driving box trucks. The collaboration involves repeated delivery runs multiple times per day, seven days per week, between Kroger's Customer Fulfillment Center in Dallas, Texas, and multiple retail locations. Just as an aside, Texas seems to be at the forefront of both autonomous deliveries and drone delivery projects. This is maybe the fifth story I've seen recently involving the state. And rounding out this section... Deep Robotics uploaded this video a few months back where they set up an experiment with five of their Dueying X20 quadruped robots, putting them in a field full of objects. The demonstration showed how the robots could work together to find specific targets using a local mesh net to communicate with each other, ensuring the work was done in the most efficient way. It's supposed to be for search and rescue situations, but it wouldn't surprise me if less human-friendly situations are being developed too, a la Black Mirror's Metalhead episode. Sticking with dystopian robot dogs, two years after being recalled due to complaints from the public, the Boston Dynamic Spot robot is back in action with the NYPD. Apparently this will be used in situations that are too dangerous for officers, providing a live feed of events, though I think we all feel where this is headed. In other news, Cambridge researchers have created a new low-cost, low-energy soft robotic hand, the team searched for inexpensive and simple ways to pick up and hold different objects and settled on this gel-like hand with sensors built in. Though it cannot independently move its fingers, it can still sense and grasp objects. The motors are all contained in the wrist, making it much cheaper and requiring much less power to use since there are no actuators and motors needed in the fingers. Photographer Malcolm J uploaded a video the other day showing off a digital conversion he made to an old broken 35mm film camera. He took a classic Yashica Electro, adding a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W RPi high quality camera with 12.3 megapixel Sony sensor, custom lens mount, and more. When using vintage C mount CCTV lenses, the photos from this thing have a nice quality to them. 
definitely check out Malcolm's channel as he's planning on making a tutorial video showing exactly how it was made. Besides being a really solid implementation of an analog to digital camera conversion, I think this highlights how far things have progressed with DIY electronics and how it's not that expensive or difficult to make cool and unique tools like this. This one's a little random. Meta AI Research just released an open source drawing animator which takes hand-drawn humanoid characters and automatically animates them with the project's web-based interface or command line utility. The project is available on GitHub so I guess if you want to make drawings dance like Parappa the Rapper this is for you. GitHub also recently updated their sponsors program introducing some new features making it easier for organizations to sponsor multiple people through bulk sponsorships. This allows those who maintain larger open source projects to easily reward the different people who help out. More info is on their site. This week we have quite a few examples of how virtual and augmented reality is being used in all sorts of industries. Firstly, Senti AR recently announced they have raised a further $8.5 million to deploy their augmented reality system in more clinical settings. Their first product, Command EP, integrates with existing imaging data systems to create real-time 3D holograms that medical staff can interact with during procedures. Surgeons can view these 3D images in 360 to see specific sections of a patient's anatomy, allowing them to increase precision of operations by seeing exactly what's happening in real time. I've been reading a lot about so-called digital twins recently, and here's a good example of what it is. The Finnish National Opera and Ballet have created a one-to-one -one scale recreation of their stage and auditorium in VR, with a view to helping improve the efficiency of production development. This allows them to test out various stage, lighting and sound designs with photorealistic simulations that mimic the characteristics of the real place. They call this the XR stage, and staff can collaborate in these virtual spaces remotely, saving both time and money compared to regular productions. I think we're going to be seeing much more of this type of use of virtual reality in work settings over the next few years. Vertex also unveiled the trailer for their virtual reality esports stadiums. The company is partnering with esports events and game developers to offer a new type of viewing experience for games and competitions. In their launch video, they showed a viewer being able to watch a Counter-Strike game in first person, directly in the action and at the tap of a button be transported into a virtual stadium overlooking the map next to an audience of other viewers. The platform is currently in closed beta, and those interested can sign up on their website. VR drumming app Paradiddle showed a sneak peek of a new augmented reality drum kit feature they've been working on. In the video, the drummer has a Roland drum kit connected to their system and is utilising the pass-through option on an Oculus headset to see everything. For more beginner-focused drumming, I could see this being a really good way to learn. What do you think? We've seen a few treadmill products for virtual reality, but what if you don't have the money or space for such a large piece of equipment? A joint effort by researchers at MIT and GIST have developed an intelligent carpet that can sense a user's foot movements, pressure and gait information to simulate walking and running without needing any other cameras or sensors. Though it does look a little silly tippy-toeing around, this could potentially be a nice cheap way to add some extra immersion to virtual reality. Skydrop is now the first company to receive approval for live drone deliveries in New Zealand, beginning in the town of Huntley. They were granted the ability to conduct beyond line-of-sight operations, as well as drone deliveries over people and property. According to their website, they have signed a deal with Domino's Pizza and will be starting deliveries this year. In a similar vein, X-Wing uploaded a video showing off their unmanned cargo flights. X-Wing is the first to bring autonomous flight operations to regional air cargo. By designing our uncrewed aircraft to integrate seamlessly into the national airspace, X-Wing is advancing our goal to connect more communities with affordable, convenient and increasingly sustainable air service. One potential implication of these fully autonomous cargo flights is that they could turn smaller, less used airports into logistics hubs, especially if they're combined with all the other autonomous logistics systems we've been seeing recently. YouTuber Modbot uploaded a video the other day exploring whether it's possible to use different types of 3D printing filaments on a dual extruder printer as a way to create supports. Since materials such as PETG and PLA don't bond together, 
he wanted to combine them in a single print as a way to create very clean and easy to remove support structures, allowing him to print extreme overhangs. It turned out really well, though it would be interesting to see whether this is possible for more complex geometries. And ending this week, Adafruit posted a little guide recently showing you how to get transparent plastic parts made for hardware projects. They were 3D printed by PCBWay using UTR8100 resin with the spray varnish option with the ability to have parts dyed for semi-transparent coloured finishes like 1990s electronics. Transparent resin printing has come a long way over the past few years and it's really cool to be able to manufacture high quality one-offs or very short runs relatively inexpensively. I definitely want to try this out myself. Alright, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching and if you'd like to see more, subscribe to this channel or check out mosfet.net.